Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. My name is Jane Applegath, a former award-winning stockbroker, television producer, script writer, yoga instructor, and serial entrepreneur, now founder of the Epic Vision Zone. I'm here to help you fulfill your dream's big vision, grow the power of your voice, and achieve the impact you're meant to have on the world. Because what you say and why you say it is key to influencing more people, growing financially free, and living a more abundant and joyful life. Here at the Epic Vision Zone, we bring you some of the world's most influential people to inspire you to hit the go button on your epic life. A big thank you to everyone for joining us here today. Oprah Winfrey said, the biggest adventure you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. And today's guest is about to show us how. I'm so excited. Debbie Sluice is a coach, trainer, and speaker who specializes in helping people expand their brain's potential to see what is possible for their future. Using vision boards, her Dare to Declare Academy, participants receive the tools to dream and create a vision board to support a life of intention, gratitude, and purpose. A former child care director, Debbie has studied personal development for over 30 years and has facilitated and witnessed science at work by guiding over a thousand clients to identify and declare their vision both online and in, in person with her Dare to Declare program and Light Up Studio. Featured on the High Performing Coach podcast, interviewed by best-selling author and speaker Jack Canfield for Success TV, and sharing the stage with best-selling author and spiritual leader Gabby Bernstein, Debbie is changing lives by making dreams come true. Welcome, Debbie. So wonderful to join to have you join us here today. Thank you so much. Oh, I it's a pleasure. Well, I'd love to delve right in to get started and tell us a little bit of your journey from going to the specializing as, as a child care director to dare to declare and more specifically when when did the light bulb go on for you to come up with this amazing dare to declare platform ah thanks for asking so my background as i said is in early years for 30 years and so i led a team predominantly women and it was not for profit multi-site and the province of ontario i live in ontario canada they decided there was a better way to be with children. So they looked to places like Europe and Australia and found play-based learning, which is now common within North America. But at the time it was really revolutionary. And I was chosen, our organization was chosen as one of the seven in the province to pilot this new way of being. And so that play-based learning really changed me as a leader, uh, my, you know, my, my way of thinking, our culture, it was so remarkable that I started to speak about it because people were asking me to tell my story. And like any good public speaker knows, it's all about the storytelling. And I didn't even realize I was becoming a public speaker. But as I started to go on this circuit, and then it turned into workshops, I really enjoyed the impact that the story was having. And then I realized the power of being able to change people educators lives but what i recognized within my own team was that what my educators were struggling with wasn't necessarily professional development not so much around curriculum it really had to do with personal development things like mindset and beliefs that were holding them back or past traumas challenges that really weren't in my scope of being the child care director i was end up i was doing coaching i didn't even realize it at the time and so because going back to the story of the circuit that I was on and doing the public speaking, I went and had a photo shoot done, a professional photo shoot, the first one. And it was to support me uh, to have a professional bio for these public speaking engagements that I was doing. And when I looked at those photos, I saw this, like you saw earlier here, when you're introducing me, that that was one of the photos. I thought, man, she's a rock star. I want to be her. So talk about the light bulb. That really was a moment where I had a peek into the magic of what my future could possibly be. 
when I looked at the photo of myself. So that was the first time that I connected images and vision into what was possible. And so then I picked up those photos and I went to a marketing agency because I thought, I need a website. I don't even know what my business is going to be, but I need a website. And they said, okay, well, let's get started. And so before I even had my business idea, I was working on my brand, working on uh, what was going to be based on these images. And then, of course, vision, vision boards came across my news feed. When I say, of course, I mean that as in you and I both know about the law of attraction, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, so that really was that magical moment, that light bulb moment where I saw the connection between my own image and what was possible. That is so powerful because it, it almost found you finding, you know, the, the power of vision and the power of seeing ourselves in a different light and how that can change everything. Because it's very interesting how we see ourselves is really not the same as how other people see us. But sometimes when we have those photo shoots and they're professionally done, you're like, wow, I'm a rock star. I love that story. That is so fabulous. And then being who you are, having been exposed to this new play base learning, I think you were primed to, to for creativity because your mind just went to there's something here. I love it. So that actually falls right into our next question, because why do you believe that vision boards are effective? Yeah. So they're effective because they provide the participant, the designer with a destination. So I talked to many people, even today, I was speaking to some people, uh, entrepreneurs, coaches that are really busy in the work of doing and the hustle. I mean, there's even like things on, you know, social media that glorify the hustle, which is great to be a, working hard. But if you don't know where you're going, I think of the analogy of climbing a mountain. I actually had a gentleman one time and he said to me, I don't need a vision board. And I said, oh, <laughs> tell me about that. And he said, because I'm just climbing the mountain. And I said to him, but okay, great. Congratulations that you're in the climb, which is, a, you know, you, you get to acknowledge yourself for that. However, how do you know if you're climbing up? And when the climb gets really, really difficult, what's going to keep you motivated to keep going? Because if you know that you're climbing to the top of the mountain, you have this idea of the view that you're going to enjoy. You're going to have this sense of accomplishment, raising your hands in the air and just being in awe of what you see. And if you're just busy climbing the mountain all your life and just in that struggle, then you're going to lose the motivation and burn out. So a vision mm -hmm. gives you that sense of purpose, clarity, and focus like a destination, like planning a trip. Mm. That's so well put. You're right. It is. It's, it's, it's the destination. Um, the journey towards that is what excites individuals but you're right the destination is the vision board is you know that's the long-term view but i love that analogy that's a great way to put it and you said it gives you clarity intention well we're going to get into that a little bit more but yeah it really does paint a picture so but i love that when that gentleman said to you that it it i'm already on my 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 road, I'm climbing the mountain, that you didn't take offense to that. I really, um, that really resonated with me because you, you didn't turn off right away, which a lot of people either don't want to hear that because that means, oh, um, they're not interested, but you said, tell me more. So there again is your sense of curiosity and curiosity is one of the keys to creativity. So whether you, you know it or not, you're really embodying this whole sense of creativity and vision and i love it i love i love that answer tell me more i have to remember that that's a great line thank you so much i'm hoping You're people welcome. will take that up as well so give us an idea of some of the common myths about vision boards because they have been around for a while and there's often um uh, myths that are surrounded by what they can do and how people can use them etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, thanks. Great question. And I think that some of the myths have come from what's 
promoted on social media with Pinterest or Instagram. And so I think one of the myths would be that you have to be crafty or artsy to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I would dispel that by saying, actually, some of my most challenging clients have been artists because they want to create a work of art, not a vision board. And they're just really concerned with the aesthetics of it. Does it all look and match where they're losing the magic of actually focusing on what do they want? for their life. So uh, I would say you don't need to be crafty or artsy to be able to create a beautiful vision board. And every one of my clients I've worked with over a thousand have always loved their board when it's complete. Another myth would be that it really is around mysticism. And I'm a Christian and I've worked with other faiths, Muslims. And so it's not woohoo mysticism. It's really based on a law, which is the law of attraction. And we can talk some more about that. But I would say that would be another myth around, around it. Uh, I think that there's also the misconception that it has to be very busy and a lot of images and look like a collage in order for it to be, I don't know, just there's this this example out on social media where almost everyone that I see has these really busy collage looking vision boards. But I actually am a proponent of some order and leaving some white space around the images so that the eye has a place to rest. So I would say that's a myth. And the last one I would say is that it can be done in one or two hours. Now, I you, you could, you could potentially do that, but to have a very transformational effective vision board you're going to want to give it the time that it deserves and so my my workshops actually last up to six hours and sometimes longer when i do a retreat so to really have this full expression of creating your vision it's one of the highest forms of self-care so it give it the time that it deserves so those are a couple of the myths that i would dispel <laughs> that's yeah i can see that um and, and i agree with you about you know taking it under your wing for a couple of hours because as we'll get into the next question because what makes the dare to declare vision board experience so unique but this is one of the things is it's not just slapping a bunch of pretty pictures on a board and you're right if there's no space for the eye to rest it gets so busy and you could also overwhelm yourself you know if you come down in the morning and you look at your vision board and you're not really in that frame of mind you could be like whoa that's giving me anxiety <laughs> you know but exactly. I, I i love the fact that there is so much more to unpack here so tell us about the uniqueness of the dare to declare vision board experience so the word that comes to mind would be gratitude and that uh, you, in my bio, it talked about Jack Canfield that I was interviewed. I was blessed to be interviewed by him in the fall. And he's been a very big influence in the way that I've developed my curriculum. And he really begins always with gratitude. And so we think about gratitude and mostly like if I think about my grandchildren, when I give them something like a cookie or just recently with the Easter, with the Easter bunny, you know, say thank you when you've got your chocolate, where it usually comes at the end. But what if we began our day with gratitude in that we are thankful for what yet is yet to come? And so if you think about that also with a vision that it's not like the end game, but that we're actually expressing gratitude for our life. And so we've each been given this gift of life. So whatever belief you hold, I would say all of us are grateful and recognize the gift of every breath and every day that we receive. And so I see it as our responsibility, which is our ability to respond to this gift, to fully live into it by being intentional, by living on purpose with purpose. And we do so by creating and putting down images for what we want for our life in all areas, so not just business, but in our spiritual uh, relationships, in our personal relationships, in our travel or leisure, what do we want to learn about? So all seven areas get to be represented on that board. That's really beautiful. Uh, uh, and how you, you said earlier that it's about six hours. Is that more or less the time for the experience of the vision board? Six hours. It is, yes. Yeah, so it was interesting because I had a woman that I just connected with this week in person 
and she met me four years ago when I was just starting. And so for one, the investment for the workshop has gone up, uh, but also uh, the time. She said, well, I thought it was just like four hours. I said, yeah, I used to book them for four hours and then they would go to six. And so I realized I need to start booking them for six hours because six. people don't haven't scheduled it in and yet they are at the four hour mark saying, I'm not done yet. So yeah, it, yeah. It, so our experience takes six hours. That's wonderful. Well. I know that you have a live experience too, where you live in Ontario. Um, it's too bad I'm not around the block because I'd be there in a nanosecond. But your studio is very special. And what gave you the inspiration for that and the name as well? So share with us the name of your studio and the, uh, you know, the, 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 the way that it was built and designed specifically to inspire individuals when they walk through the door. Thank you. I haven't thought about this in a while, but when, when that light bulb moment happened where I said, like I said, wow, I get to create vision boards and this is what I know I need to do. It was like within my bones, like I knew that I had to do this and that I wanted to do this and that I got to do this. And then, I shared that with my husband at his workplace and I was looking at his boardroom and he said, I know that look in your eyes. <laughs> and I said, this would make an amazing studio space to hold vision boards. And he said, well, I can do something better. He said, what if we knock out this wall and this wall? And what if you take this full space? And I said, oh, and again, there was that vision. I could see it already in my mind's eye of what this space could possibly be. And so it is absolutely gorgeous. It uh, reminds people, they say of hugi, which is like a Danish word for cozy, but it's deeper than that. And the tables were specifically designed to house, to have two people working side by side. I have hundreds and hundreds of magazines. So it's like a playroom for adults to create a vision board. Now I should say adults, I've had teens as well. I had a group of 13 year old girls come and do a vision board with me, which was extraordinary. But when people walk through the door, I want them to light up. And the, I got that idea from an Oprah, it's interesting you quoted Oprah at the beginning, from an Oprah book club. And um, uh, her last name is Morrison. Why can I, it's escaping me. Um, sorry, Morrison is her last name. And she said, when, a child walks through the door, what's the first thing that you notice? Do you notice their untied shoes, their messy clothes, um, you know, what's what, what dirt on their face? Or does your face light up? And so I just love that as an educator, as a mother, just that reminder to not be in that state of right away of worry of having to fix things, but just be welcoming and inviting. And so that's what I do as well whenever someone comes th to do an in-person workshop is that I greet them by name, I make sure, you know, I'm smiling, but also recognizing the potential that they have for fear to do this process. Because it's very, it's a very vulnerable, intimate experience. And to put things on a board that you don't know the how, that you don't know how that's going to happen. So I, I honor that and recognize that I want people to feel safe. And so that's why it's called the light up studio because of does your face light up? Yeah. Tony Morrison. Oh. That's her name. Oh, there is. okay. <laughs> Tony Morrison. I love yeah. that. Does your face light up? Because really, uh, you know, when you look at, when you drop off a child at a uh, daycare or kindergarten, the, the real young, you know, children, their, their space is colorful. It's meant for play and, and, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's you and I had an earlier discussion and what we were saying is as adults, we've forgotten how to play and, but it's still in us. And you can see it when you see adults interacting with their children, you know, they're really silly, you know, grown men and women you know, making funny faces and doing silly things to make their kids smile. It's, it's just, it's fun. And it's, it's, I love it. It's amazing. So, there is some power behind the vision board. And how does a Dare to Declare vision board work to empower your dreams? I know that this might be tied into some of the, the myths that are there, but I know they can be very, I, I know they are very powerful. So maybe give us some insight into how they work and why they work to empower our dreams. 
Yeah. And I would say it starts with empowering yourself in that, mm -hmm. like I said, just even coming to do a vision board for some of my clients, there may have been resistance at home where say there's a spouse that says, what are you doing? Why do you need that? Why do you need to have a vision in your life? Isn't everything just fine? So there may be some, yeah, some challenges or resistance already. Um, and so one of the things that I let my clients know is that this vision board is specifically, it's just for them. It's not for your family. It's not for your spouse. This is your vision for your life. And mm. the only people that deserve to see it are those that are as excited about it as you are. So if you feel there's going to be any resistance, any questions, judgment, they don't deserve to see it. So we actually, I support my clients to make a decision of where they're going to house and display their vision board and that for most people it needs to be in a private space maybe it's in the back of their bedroom door in their closet in their washroom somewhere where they can see it regularly but they don't have to answer for the choices that they've made on their board so that is very empowering for men and women but mostly I work with women where they for the first time in some cases have decided what do I want Mm -hmm. So that choice of deciding what they want in all of those areas is, is unique and empowering where many women know what their spouse wants, what their children want, what their employer wants. But when I ask them, what do you want? They, they say they don't know, but the work that we do together, which is why, again, it takes six hours in the exercises that I support them to uncover and just open up their throats, <laughs> their declaring throats so that they can really from here to here, be able to declare what it is that they want. And I think about it like, have you ever had it where someone says, how are you? And you say, fine, mm -hmm. just all fine. We're always fine. And then they look <laughs> you straight in the eye. And you can tell there's made, they've made a connection and they say, no, really, how are you? Yeah. And then it's like, you feel the emotion. And you mm -hmm. just pause. And that's what it is when we do the work with what do you want? And so when you get really clear on what you want, that's where the power is. Because we'll talk a little more about the law of attraction, but where our focus goes, our energy flows. And we start to see those opportunities. So that's, that's the power in it. Yes. It's about taking leadership of yourself first. I, that's mm -hmm. how I feel. And that is so empowering. Uh, then there are some other factors besides that empowerment that I really love uh, that you have uh, put on your website. Maybe you can give us some of those uh, things that come to the surface that a vision board uh, can also help uh, with other aspects of your life and or your business. So do you mean things like clarity? Yes. And yeah, and focus. Uh, and what results from the vision board is a really clear, like we said, a path of goals. So we, going back to the idea of the mountain is that the vision would be, I would imagine the summit, right? At the top, it right. would just be arms spread like, yes, right? And like, <laughs> oh, look at this. And, you know, just enjoying the view. But the goals would be, okay, so how far are we going to travel today? And then what ledge are we going to find that's safe that we can put up a tent and we can rest for a while and we can enjoy the view from here? And we can acknowledge and look down and go, wow, we've really moved a long ways up. And we get to share that with our partner who's climbing with us and maybe telephone someone else and show them the view. So the goals are... the the journey on the way to the vision. And so that's a really big part as well of this process. Yes, I, I know there's, there's so many components that come. It's like a puzzle where the pieces start to come together because you've got your empowerment and then you've got your clarity. Uh, now you have a vision of what your future could be. And then you have the purpose to do that and to reach your goals because you want to reach that summit. And the summit is, of course, the top of the mountain. So I love that that whole concept of giving yourself the opportunity to imagine a destination that you want. 
you know, I mean, that's because like you said, we don't put we life goes on and there's so many tasks and, you know, there's the family and then there's the spouse, but then you have a job if you're employed there uh, with, with a company, then there's the employer, then if you do charity work and it just goes on and on and on. And that's why a lot of times when you say that question, it's true. People go, well, I don't have time to think about what I want. <laughs> you know? There's no time for me, but oh my gosh, that's wonderful. I love it. That I can see now why this could be so impactful. So a question now, because you do have a beautiful studio where people can come and experience that firsthand. Tell us a little bit about teaching virtual or online classes for this experience. So what happened was uh, I was doing them only in person in my studio. And then I decided there's, this is another story, but I decided that I was going to leave my nine to five job. I was going to leave my, uh, my childcare role. And I gave my board of directors notice. And that was in January, 2020. And we all know what happened in March, 2020, that the world changed. And I thought, oh, great. I just quit my 30 year career for in-person workshops in a studio that I can't access anymore. Now what? And so I decided to just try out uh, a small little workshop based on a practice that I have been doing for years called a power word workshop. And so it's, again, for anyone that's listening, if a vision board sounds like it might be, a, you know, a big task and you're like, I don't know where to begin. This is a really great place to start is to choose a single word that brings you joy, that moves you into action, that inspires you and that feels safe. So those would be the qualifiers. And so I gave this 90 minute workshop online and I had 65 people register. And I thought, all right, the universe is letting me know that I'm on the right track. And from that, I created 10 paying clients. And so that was my first taste of what was possible outside of in-person vision board workshops. And so mm -hmm. then I, um, joined a coaching program and my colleagues within that program, they wanted clarity and vision for their coaching businesses. So they asked to do a vision board with me and I said, okay, so I created a program where I did it over three consecutive weeks for two hours each. So it's still six hours. And I started to have global clients. So I'm, I have clients from all over the world now and, and different, I mean, I had to learn about time zones and currency and, and it was just really, really amazing. And I, I can't imagine not doing that anymore or having that. And now that we're going back to in-person again, it's, it's sort of the shift back to that, but I, I still will maintain online because I just love being able to have a global impact uh, and doing the vision boards that way. Yes, that's what the uh, pandemic did for a lot of us. It actually pushed us into the virtual world whether we wanted to or not. And I know I came kicking and screaming <laughs> because, you know, there's, there was so much learning curve with the, 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 the platforms and the technology. And, and I'm very grateful I have a tech husband, so thank goodness. But I still get frustrated and I couldn't even imagine doing it by myself. But the, the, the beauty of it is that, like you said, you reach the globe. Um, so you're able to touch so many more people. And I'm so glad that you were able to transition into a virtual platform, even though I know that when you can go in studio, it's, it's more powerful in that sense. But kudos to you for transitioning, because as you can see, there are people all over the world that are going to benefit from your, uh, your teachings. And that's the goal, right? To touch as many people as we can. So, and I love that it's so useful for entrepreneurs and coaches, this type of, of, of insight into their business, because even though, you know, you might have a business plan and, and a, a vision, this is always good for a refresher as well, because let's face it, our visions change, you know, it, they're not always the same, but I know that we've spoken uh, and you've mentioned a lot about the law of attraction. So what is it that most people don't know about the law of attraction and its principles? Well, the first thing is that it's a universal law. So uh, again, as I, I identified earlier, I am a Christian and sometimes people get tripped up with law of attraction. They, they just 
assign it to mysticism. And I said, well, you would never say the same about the law of gravity. So it's mm -hmm. as real as the law of gravity. And so, as I said earlier, where your focus goes, uh, your energy flows. And even people that think that might sound a little bit um, yeah, vague, I just would challenge you to think about whenever you've walked into a room and you can right away sense if someone is angry or if there mm -hmm. is like, you know, a conversation going on or there just has been an angry conversation. Let's say it's not even happening anymore, but you're mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, the energy feels negative in here. And people yeah. that don't even ascribe to this, they say things like that. I know this. I've heard them say it. But we're not as attuned to positive energy because it's inviting. And we just, you know, join in. And it's like, oh, everybody's happy. This energy feels good. I'm just going to join in. But we definitely have this sense of protecting ourselves when we, hear, when we feel that negative energy. So we're always giving off energy. And so that's just a little example of how we are when we are focused on what we really want we're sending off this energy so again there's there's so much science behind it and a lot more is being uncovered really month by month there's so much more that we're understanding around how the brain works um i find it very interesting because of my background in early years and thinking about children who the first five years is so crucial to their development. And if they don't receive the love and attention they deserve, the brain actually prunes itself. So the brain actually shrinks. There is um, Dr. Jean Clinton from McMaster University in Hamilton. Her mantra is love grows brains. And, I, and as an early child educator, I used to always let my employees know that to say, if you're having a tough day, your only responsibility is to love on the children because you're growing their brains. But when children don't, uh, receive the love they deserve, as I said, the brain shrinks. And we used to think that was their plight in life, that, you know, we would just offer behavior modification programs. But what we know now is with focused attention, the brain can grow leafy type branches. The brain literally rewires itself. So taking that same premise by focusing on what you want and in the optimal times, which are right before you go to sleep and when you wake up in the morning and focusing on what you want, you're literally rewiring your brain so that it is observing as well of opportunities to bring to, into your life what you want. Yes, I love that analogy. That And you're so, I, I you had told me about the brain earlier in our earlier conversation and I found that fascinating that, you know, it actually prunes. Uh, but now because science realizes that there's neuroplasticity so we can actually grow those branches you know, there is opportunity even even after, you know, the child might get older, but that's also in, in adults as well. I'm, I'm thinking that when you have your vision board, you're feeling good about your future because that's what you're, you're building, your future vision of, of where you're going. And by doing that, you're putting emotions into play and that's energy and motion. So you're right. I, I just... I, I can see that if you, if you know, like you put your vision board in a place where you're going to see it and you're, you look at it and it makes you feel good, then right there, boom, like you said, that's, that's the magnet. But yeah, I, I, I cause I'm, I, I love the science behind all of it and, and how it actually turns the light bulb on for many of us so that we can see it's not just woo woo. You know, there actually is some science here and it, it actually is very powerful. So you have, um, and thank you for that story, by the way, Deb. I, I just love it, Debbie. And, and you have what you call a dreamer's scorecard. I love the title, by the way. So tell us, tell our audience about this and, and that it's free on your website. So I'd love everyone. I did, I filled it out myself and I just loved it. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, it's based on the framework of the Vision Board Workshop, which is dream, discover, and declare so and you get to score yourself so it's a fun little quiz uh we all love quizzes you know those fun things you have on facebook like what celebrity do you look like or you know whatever so it's just a fun little quiz to score yourself on how big do you dream maybe you think that you're a great big dreamer and maybe you have some challenges or maybe you do dream really big but then with the discovering with uncovering how much liberty do you have in that? How much freedom are you finding that you have that? And then the last is declaring. And declaring, I just want to qualify that where 
I had a lady say to me, declaring sounds so loud. And I said, well, that is interpretive mm -hmm. because it could be a whisper. It could yeah. be declaring to yourself, saying it, just saying it out loud. So there's so much mm -hmm. power in declaring. And at the end of my workshops, which also makes a, a Dare Declare Vision Board workshop unique is that I encourage the participants, everything's voluntary, but I encourage them to declare their board, talk us through it as though it's already in your life. So that yeah. you're telling the story, this is my home. So that's what raises the energy is where you can imagine yourself within the images. So this is my home and I spent time here with my family and we love having campfires in the backyard. The kids are jumping on the trampoline and, you know, our friends are over, my girlfriends come and we have a glass of wine. Like you're just creating and spinning the story of this beautiful life that is your vision. And there's usually tears <laughs> at that point <laughs> just because it's so powerful. So oh, anyways, back to the scorecard. Yeah, so sorry. That's what the scorecard is about. Dream, discover, declare. And just to uncover how uh, what you score in those areas. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, not at all. I was I was I was going to say having individuals, I, I, the scorecard is great. I think that's a, a great place to start. And what you were just saying about having individuals tell the story of their vision board that is so powerful because then you're making them live it pretend that they're living it and by doing that they're putting out the energy that they are living it so there is so much because i'm all about the art of illusion you know i mean imagination and and story is that's fabulous debbie i just love that so you have a dare to declare certificate program now this is a six week certificate program and something that is is it could be certainly something that people can run with they can create a business out of so just give us some insight into your program because it is so unique and the the you know if, if someone is looking to create a business and be it, or add it to their coaching program this would be ideal for sure. And I'm glad that you said that because some people say, oh, do I need to become a Dare to Declare facilitator as in it become my sole business offering vision board workshops? No, it just fits into a myriad of businesses. I have an event planner. She's the one who's actually orchestrating and hosting this women's retreat where I'm going to be on the stage with Gabby Bernstein. I'm actually, I'm going to be flying in a couple of days. So she's a certified facilitator. I have someone in direct sales with oils. Um, she's work doing it with her team and inspiring. She's actually going to be opening a retreat center with horses and vision boards are going to be part of that. So yes, it can really fit into any business, but certainly with coaches. And I have a coach that's a graduate who's been coaching for 20 years. And I have a brand new coach who's like looking for a plug and play workshop to add to her program because she's got a brand new program. And the one who's been doing it for 20 years said that the marketing has been so easy because the message is so clear mm -hmm. and people get it. They're like, oh, a vision board. Okay. She said people that didn't understand her coaching before, even close family members are now going, ah, oh, I get what you do. <laughs> so that's been marvelous. And so, yes, it's, it's actually a six week core instruction program, but the total program is 12 weeks. So the front end is doing a vision board yourself. So there's an introduction module, and then we're going to work for three weeks together. So like we talked about earlier, that virtual vision board online, I do that with the group of the academy. So you're going to create your own because it's really important for my participants to have a the personal experience so it's basically like coming to the concert taking it in being in the front seat and then i'm going to take you behind backstage so but also to get clear on what you want for your business um so we can support you in that and then the six weeks of instruction really has to do with online and in person and a hybrid as well as how to market how to coach all of the framework so that you feel really confident that at the end when you receive the slide deck a guide that you can hit the ground running like my graduates have. So I had one woman last June, she graduated on the Thursday and had three paying clients on the Friday. So I know with confidence wow. that this is my program promise is that you can earn revenue and create impact right away. And in addition to that, uh, I love the community that's built. So we have a Facebook mm. group that they're very active in there. 
So, so far there are 13 graduates and five people have already invested. So we've got 18 people in there and they're communicating with each other. And I offer them monthly calls of support because I'm still doing it. And so I get to offer my hot tips of things that I'm still learning. Maybe like what I've really been leaning into is more corporate opportunities. So mm. how do you, you know, explore that as an option for uh, revenue, a revenue stream? And, and is that something that lights you up? Uh, and as you said, it is a certified program. So they receive a certificate and they have a spot on my website under my directory as well. So there's just a whole library of resources for them online. So like your hubby, I have someone who supports me with my tech and she's got me all set up on a beautiful platform where everything is easily accessible. Wonderful. Oh my gosh. This is, it, it, it's it, like you said, you can hit the ground running with a program that has support behind it. It's not just a one and done and we'll see you whenever. Uh, because like you said, there's a community that also comes together. Uh, but I love that you have got everything you've, you thought of what needs to be done because you've been there, you've done it from everything from the slide deck to the presentation, to the marketing, um, and, uh, you know, the packaging. So if anyone is looking, I think this is a great addition to a coaching program, or if someone is starting in a business, an entrepreneurial business, and they love the idea of coaching individuals, this is perfect. Like you said, to just get your toe in the water and then you, you've got it. You, you, you're ready to go. It's pa a package. I love it. It's just like you said, one and done. So what are you most excited about in your life right now? Ha. Huh. I was doing some strategic planning last night and I was asked about this question and I would say that I am living my best life. Uh, and I would say I'm most excited about my freedom of time. And so I was able to get back to travel. Uh, I've traveled three times in the last six months. Uh, and I was able to work on location. So I was still able to coach my clients. So my business, I was able to have it all. So, you know, yeah. poverty mindset says it's either or. You either have your business or you have your vacation, but you can't have both. Whereas a wealth and abundance mindset says I can have it all. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really feel is that I'm in this abundance wealth mindset where I really feel and I'm experiencing that I can have it all. That's wonderful. Yes, it would make total sense. Your vision. I would love to see your vision for you, for sure. It <laughs> well, might be it's changing. Me, yeah. Oh, yes. I know, yeah. Very tiny though. But but yeah, yeah, that's fabulous, I'm sure. And all these people that are coming to you, like Jack Canfield and Gabby Bernstein. Oh my gosh. I mean, how incredible is that? So because we're here, um, I wanted to ask you, are there any last words that you would like to share with our audience? Well, I think I'll leave you with three words that I received from Jack Canfield, which are ask for what you want. So ask is the first word. Get really clear on what you want. The second word is believe. Believe that it's possible and mm -hmm. lean into that belief. And then the last is being open to receive. And I would say that that, even though it sounds like it's probably the easiest, it's probably one of the most difficult for us as women and if you think about, you know, when someone offers you a coffee or offers you help or offers you a ride, we're so quick, we're so quick to turn those things down. So exercise that muscle of receiving uh, favors, receiving gifts from people with simply a grateful thanks and see what the universe will send your way. So ask, believe and receive. Mm. Wonderful. So powerful. And there is one last question because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone. If your life were an epic story, what would the title be? I would say full of grace. Mm. My middle name is Grace. My grandmother's name is Grace. And I feel that um, there's been so much grace in my life. Uh, again, as a Christian, I just feel that God has been gracious to me from the moment I was born in that I was adopted at five months old into the family that I was. And I just feel his grace and uh, all around me. So, um, and I get to pour that back into others. So full of grace. 
Mm, I love that. And I know your word this year is poor. So yes. I don't even know if you, you realize that, but yes, pouring into beautiful, just beautiful. Well, I want to thank you again, Debbie, for joining us and for to get your free um, scorecard, Dreamer scorecard, and a free visionary call with this incredible lady. Be sure to check out Debbie's website at Debbie Sluice, that's S L Y, excuse me, S L U Y S dot com. We'll have that all on the Epic Vision Zone bio pages as well. So go and check there. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath and check out how you can become an epic entrepreneur at janeapplegath.com and get your free download, The Keys to Your Dreams. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dreams into epic success.